Well, for more on what trade uncertainties means for the markets and your investments, let's bring in Rebecca Patterson, Chief Investment Officer at Bessemer Trust. Rebecca, always great to see you. Great to be here. So always. we started off the top with this notion that, you know, this trade stuff, nobody knows how it's going to turn out. But if you strip it away, there are a number of things to be concerned about in the markets themselves. How do you view the markets and where we are? You mentioned already the yield curve. You mentioned Chinese equities. You had one more on your list. Fed hiking. Fed hiking. Yeah, that's there. And I'd say of those three, the one that I'm worried about most is the Fed hiking, especially if we get more inflation than expected. I mean, oil, we saw today. We had a big rise in oil. Despite OPEC cutting, oil seems to be hanging in there. That continues. Gasoline prices weigh on the consumer. So inflation in the Fed, to me, would be the top of the list. The yield curve, if we go back to World War II, after the curve inverts, you have had six to 24 months before the recession starts. So I think everyone's getting very focused on this front page of newspapers, mm -hmm. and everyone thinks, oh my God, I have to ring the bell, go to cash the minute it inverts. Historically, that hasn't been a good trading strategy. And when we look at jobless claims, we look at business con and consumer confidence, we're still seeing global growth that's over 3%, closer to 3.5%. Second quarter US GDP, it looks like it's tracking around 4%. So I don't think the recession is imminent, but there are, we're late cycle. The yield curve tells us we're late cycle, and the, the policy error risk gets larger late cycle. So it seems like this has um, been sort of a game of giveth and taketh away. Yes. And so we're just taking a look at the, the puts here in, in the givebacks in terms of the market direction. Are, are we to assume that you're saying that things are sort of on the precipice right now where if the Fed does hike, that could really hurt the markets? The Fed's going to hike, They're right? going and the to, market right, right. is discounting some of that. And whether we get one more hike this year or two more this year, I don't think matters a huge amount. Mm -hmm. But if we look at the next year or two years and the Fed continues at a certain point, and we don't know what that moment is, what's the yield? What's the real yield where things tip, where borrowing costs get too high, where it starts to hurt profit margins more? It's coming. I don't think it's now. I mean, and we are seeing responses. You guys all saw China cut interest rates in the last few days. It's letting its currency weaken a little bit. It's stimulating. So the second biggest economy in the world is taking some action to try to offset possible trade wars. Um, so it is a push and pull. It's not a one-way street. So my question, does a recession cause the market to sell off, or does a market sell-off cause a recession? I, I think it's the latter, but I'm curious to see what you That's think. That's a great question. Um, you know, historically, well, we all know this, the markets anticipate what's going to happen. And so if we, if we wait to see non-farm <coughs> non payrolls decline, we've already probably missed the first 10 or 15 percent of the S&P decline. But there are leading indicators to watch. We're all talking about the yield curve, business consumer oh, confidence, for sure. That's a biggie. And it's still holding up pretty well. Um, if you look at pending home sales, forget the home sales data we saw today, pending home sales, what's happening in the future, architectural billings, what people are planning before they break ground. There's a number of really good leading indicators we can watch that tell us when it's time to start de-risking more. I don't think we're there yet, but I think once you see the data start to roll over, to your point, it exacerbates the market sell-off. And I think this next one's going to be nasty because of algos, because of the influence of exchange-traded funds. I think it, it might not be as deep a recession, but it could be a very fast equity sell-off into the recession. We're not there yet. But when it comes, you don't want to be late to that game. Last quick question. What sectors do you like the best in this environment? <sighs> <laughs> so that was pretty, wasn't it? I just did that on live TV. I usually save that for my children. Um, you know, we have been building since last fall an overweight position in commodities and energy equities and, and added some hard commodities to our portfolio in January this year. Late cycle as a hedge against inflation. I like holding on to that position. Um, we are overweight technology right now. That's today that didn't feel so good, but I think there's a bigger structural story there. I'm okay holding on to that, although I do worry when we finally see that sustained bear market, it's such a crowded trade. Is there, are we going to have a washout at least for a period of time?
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.